Okay, so our little pieces are ready. I'm in my polymer baking apron. I have my oven mitts so I don't get burned. And what I use to bake my polymer is a polymer oven. It looks like a toaster oven, but don't use your toaster oven for polymer. It tends to have temperature spikes. It doesn't keep a very constant temperature, and you're more likely to burn your, your polymer, which we don't want to do because the fumes are toxic if you do burn polymer. I'm not talking toxic like you're going to die right away, but if you're using polymer as much as I do, you probably want to avoid anything that's um, toxic like that for extended periods of time. Your best friend is an oven thermometer. It, whether you're, you're baking your polymer in one of these or in your conventional oven, please get one of these because your conventional oven or even this little guy are not going to have the correct temperature listed. Your oven will say 275, but if you put this in, you might find that it's really closer to 300. It might be less. So you, you want to have the ability to check what temperature you're, you're cooking at because polymer, as a rule, you don't want to exceed 300 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. This is why the polymer oven is so great is that it doesn't allow you to exceed 300. Now, different um, brands will have different baking temperatures. Like the Sculpey 3, it's 275. Um, and I think like Fimo is 265. You don't want to exceed 265. For my own purposes, because I tend to mix and match different types of polymer, I try to, uh, to keep it around 260, 265. I figure I'd rather cook it for longer um, at a lower temperature and not risk burning it than, um, you know, temp cooking it at a uh, higher temperature and risking burning something in there. So um, I'll usually, you know, let it run for about 15 minutes or so and put my little thermometer in there just so I can make sure that it's at the correct temperature and then I'll put my my pieces in there. I didn't really mention what I've been working on, but it's just a piece of flooring tile that I had my handyman, aka dad, uh, cut down to a size that I could fit into my little oven. Um, so for right now, I'm going to bake it um, for about 20 minutes. And once it cools, I'm going to put a backing of polymer on it just to make the back nice and smooth. And that way I'll also be able to engrave my little initials in the back. So I'll show you how I do that when it's done baking and cooling. We have just one more thing to do, um, really, which is to create a backing to the earrings. I mean, right now they're, they're perfectly fine but they do have a little bit of the texture of the tile. They, um, they're a little bit too flat too and I really want to create a nice smooth backing to them and it would be nice to be able to put my initials too so that I can kind of sign my pieces. So what I've done is I've just taken a little piece of polymer and I've flattened it and I just lay it across the back and press it down and pull off excess. And I'm just going to keep sort of pressing it from the center toward the edges. Pulling off excess on the, the edges. You can wrap around the edges if you want. If you see that the edges could use a little bit more polymer, they seem a little thin on the edges, or you don't feel like your um, beads there on the corners are held down very well, you can wrap it around a little bit. But when all is said and done, you should end up with a nice 
flat backing like that. And then I'm just going to take my little ice pick, repurposed, I should say, ice pick thingy, and I'm just going to write my initials on the back. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to do that for all of them. Um, once I've baked it one last time, I'm going to uh, then I'm going to paint the image yet again. This time using um, just a, a gloss varnish that you can get at any craft store in the polymer section. I make a, a varnish specifically for the polymer, so I'll put that on there along with a little bit of the mica powder to just um, really help the color to stay. I'll be pulling out this little eye pin um, slowly and putting it back in with a little bit of epoxy so that it stays uh, really nice and permanently. Um, and then I'll be attaching it to the filigree um, earring post. And so Hi everyone, so I hope you liked my video. Uh, while this has been however many minutes for you, it's actually been the entire day for me. I've been working on this from 9 in the morning till about 5, I guess, in the afternoon, so it's pretty time consuming. Definitely not something that you can do quickly, and I still have actually some work to do on this before it will be ready enough to, to sell. But I, I love the end result, and I hope you enjoyed watching me create that. I hope to do this again sometime soon, but it might be painting because this is really time consuming <laughs> and it makes it a little difficult to do a um, video of it. So, anyway, I will hopefully see you guys some other time. Okay, one thing I just realized I forgot to mention is when you're dealing with polymer, polymer is classified as non toxic but I really wouldn't recommend thinking of it that way. I wouldn't have it around small children who might put thing, put it in their mouth or be working with it and put their hands in their mouth. I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, it is PVC. It's essentially a plastic. Um, what difference is there between this and American cheese squares, you might ask? I don't know, but I wouldn't want to ingest either one. When you are working with it, make sure that you, you know, keep your hands away from your mouth, your face, um, I often will keep little baby wipes. Uh, I just use the cheap ones that they have at Walmart. Shopping tip, if you want the cheapest of anything, look at the bottom shelf because that's where they tuck all that stuff away. So in the baby butt wipe aisle, you will find this at the bottom. <laughs> So here we are in my kitchen. I have my polymer baking apron on. I have my oven mitt. <laughs> Just put that anywhere, Rebecca.